all know the point is, is that it's very hard for people to understand how you fix a record. Well, I had good teachers. And I also had excellent, excellent engineers. Because for me, up to this time that you're hearing this record now, for almost 12 to 15 years, I was being trained by engineers to fix records, including uh, uh, no. I know what you're about to say. I'm not going to say it. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to ask you about it. So. No. Yeah, you got it. You did this. Come on out and say it, man. Come on. You know, man. Talking, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do the question. Talking no. of fixing records, no, no. there's a rumor no, 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 no. <laughs> that nobody really ever confirmed that you may have fixed some of the Ringo Starr tracks for the Beatles. <laughs> okay, that was an answer. <laughs> the part that hurts, the real, real part that hurts is that the people do not understand fixing records was a way of life in the 60s and the 70s. It was a way of life fixing up records because 98% of the groups, self-contained groups, are not on their own albums. They are not on their own albums. And what I did and what I was doing was going in, I was one of the few drummers who could actually go in, join the group, and make the records. Because the record companies were paying a lot of money to make these records happen. My thing was, I got along with everybody and I never went out and started hollering and complaining, no, that ain't so-and-so, so-and-so doing this, that, and the other. And I just did a job. The Beatles music was just another job for me, another job because half of the songs that I played, I played on 21 tracks of the Beatles, half of them had no drums because they kicked him out in the beginning. And the whole point is that whether you realize it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, it becomes irrelevant at this point. But you're going to find out that he's not on anything. The man made his money, and his money and everything else was made by live. The man spent a million dollars promoting the Beatles. Brian Epstein spent money to promote the Beatles. And that was unheard of in the 60s, to spend that kind of money to do something. Ringo took somebody else's place in that band because that's who they wanted and that's who they could control. And that's all it was. It was all about control. He looked the part that they wanted. He was the one that he chose and that's what they did. But the making of those records and the fixing of those records, 98% of them were first recorded early in England and brought to the United States to be done and fixed. That's why Mercury Records and Capitol Records, they both have Beatles albums. I did mine in the Capitol Studio in New York City. I had no idea who the hell the Beatles were or anything else. I was doing a job. And that, for me, is the hardest thing because I've had my life threatened too many times. And at this point in my life, I don't care anymore. And it really doesn't bother me whether I talk about it or do anything else about it because I don't have to go back there or to deal with it in life anymore. And I'm very proud of that for my sake. What he did, he made his money, he did what he needed to do. He doesn't have to answer to anybody else for what he's done. And it's a shame to 
you know, for things to happen this way, but it did happen. And it has happened with too many other people. There are four drummers on the Beatles' music. Ringo is not one of them. 